वेलकम टू माई ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल बिहेवियर प्ले लिस्ट टूडे आई डिस्कस अबाउट ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रक्चर सो लेट सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दी आउटलाइन ऑफ द सेशन फॉर इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रक्चर देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डेफिनेशन ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रक्चर नेक्स्ट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रक्चर नेक्स्ट बेसिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रक्चर सो लेट सी वन बाय वन all these points briefly but before that just look at the question that can be asked in the examination explain organizational structure briefly and also explain in detail different characteristics of organization structure the weightage can be 7 marks here you can see one of the organization structure and with the help of that we can understand the introduction of organizational structure a worker reports to a manager here you can see worker reports to a manager in this structure next manager reports to a vice president next vice presidents to a c level senior leader like a chief executive officer or a chief administrative officer so you will see this as the basic set of layers of an organizational structure mostly organizational structure defines how job tasks are formally divided group and coordinated now you can understand the definition of organizational structure with the help of this figure an organizational structure is a system that outlines how certain activities such as task allocation coordination and supervision are directed in order to achieve the goals of an organization so this definition having three different part once again look at this first part organizational structure is a system here you can see this is actually a system that outlines how certain activities such as task allocation coordination and supervision so these are the different activities and these different activities are actually direct in order to achieve the goals of an organization whether small or large each company must consider the way in which its organization is structured so each and every company must consider certain organizational structure a structure is laid out in such a way that first employees are able to be productive make a profit and at last accomplish the organizational's mission once again a structure is laid out in such a way that or you can say structure is designed in such a way that employees are able to be productive company should make a profit and accomplish the organization's mission next characteristics of organizational structure important characteristics of an organizational structures are as follows first span of control next departmentalization next centralization next decentralization next work specialization next chain of command and at last formalization so we will see one by one all these different characteristics of the organizational structure briefly so let's start from the first one span of control with the help of this figure you can understand here there is a narrow span of control and this one is the wide span of control here you can see 10 members are there and so that you can say span of control is 10 here each member having two employees only so you can say here there is a narrow span of control and that is 2 so we can say span of control that means who manages whom span of control refers to the numbers of subordinates that can be managed effectively 
and efficiently by supervisor or managers in an organization so here you can see this is actually the supervisor and having three subordinates you can see so this person has to manage or you can say control these three person so here you can say span of control is three similarly here you can see this person has to control this two person only so here the span of control is two so once again span of control refers to the number of subordinates that can be managed effectively and efficiently by supervisors or you can say manager in an organization typically it is either narrow or wide resulting in an hierarchical or more flatter organizational structure next one departmentalization departmentalization refers to the formal structure of the organization composed of various departments and managerial positions and the relationships with each other here you can see in this organization there are the different departments and having different teams so you can say this organizational structure is specifically based on this departmentalization characteristics as an organization grows its department grow and more subunits are created which in turn add more levels of management here you can see these are the different levels of management in each department dividing up the many tasks of the organization into specialized jobs now next characteristic centralization so from this figure you can understand this structure is centralized and this one is the decentralized now let's see centralization refers to a setup in which the decision making powers are concentrated in a few leaders at the top of the organization structure here you can see the president has the power for decision making so that is actually we can say centralized structure so you can say the leaders at the top of the organization structure has the decision making power and that is actually concentrated over here that's why it is called as centralization decisions are made at the top and communicated to lower managers for implementation for example army and large corporations next one decentralization so this is exactly opposite to the centralization from this figure you can understand here the power is concentrated at the top level and here power is not concentrated but it is actually distributed over the organization structure a decentralized organizational structure is one in which senior management has shifted the authority for some types of decision making to lower levels in the organization so very simple in decentralization the authority that is actually shifted for some types of decision making to lower levels in the organization daily operations and decision making responsibilities are delegated by top management to middle and lower level managers and that is specially for the daily operations so at that time decision making responsibilities are delegated or you can say shifted by top management to middle and lower managers this frees up top management to focus more on major decisions next one work specialization it is sometimes called a division of labor refers to the degree to which an organization divides individual tasks into separate jobs so here you can see cells is actually divided in so many groups so that is called as high specialization and in this one cells is divided in two groups only so that is called as low specialization so once again look at this important sentence 
it is sometimes that means work specialization is called as division of labor refers to a degree to which an organization divides individual tasks into separate jobs from this figure also you can understand so work specialization is particularly beneficial in manufacturing so if the company is based on the manufacturing of any product so at that time this is the desirable characteristics of organizational structure for example from this figure you can understand mary assembles the frame bob adds the sides erin paints the product joe checks the products is complete and finally jack prepares the product to be shipped so from this figure you can understand the different person having different tasks that's why we can say division of labor that means the work is actually shifted into separate jobs next chain of command it is an unbroken line of authority that extends from the top of the organization that means at the ceo all the way down to bottom so here you can see this is actually the unbroken line of authority and it extend from the top of the organization all the way down to the bottom so if this line of authority is long then it is called as the long chain command if it is short then it is called as short chain command chain of the command clarifies who report to whom within the organization next one formalization so from this figure you can understand here there is a formal organization and this one is the informal organization formalization is the degree to which the organization is going to have rules and tasks clearly defined here you can see and described with all the relationship skills and all the job requirements the authority responsibility and accountability of the organizational members are clearly defined as per the position in the structure formalization reduces ambiguity and provides direction to the employees however a high degree of formalization may actually lead to reduce innovativeness because employees are used to behave in a certain manner only now let's take a look at one of the older simpler organizational structure that companies have adopted they are still very much in use today so this is actually the simple structure simple structures have low degree of departmentalization wide span of control centralized authority here you can see and little formalization you know that formalization means it is the extent to which an organizational policies procedures job descriptions and rules are written and explicitly articulated so that is clearly defined called as formalization now the simple structure that here you can see this type of organizational structure is inexpensive to maintain its accountability is very clear when this kind of organization structure increases in size here you can see decision making slows down and the manager becomes overly burdened because of the manager has to control all the assistants it also risky means everything depends on one person if that person becomes ill or die it will difficult to handle the business if you have any doubt then write in the comment box thanks my dear friends for watching this video press the like button to appreciate